Hello, Roby. Uh, I'll, I'll stick with you as long as I can. Okay. I missed the first part of what you were just saying, that you were muted for a bit. Oh, oh, let's see. Okay. You're okay now. Yeah, somebody's coming to the house to fix something that I got to deal with. So when he gets here, I'm going to have to. Understandable. Sign. Understandable. So we have no time to whine about the New York Jets today, huh? <laughs> no, I guess not. Yeah, yeah, I got punched in the nose yesterday. All right, Roby, here we go. We're in chapter 14 now. And let me share the screen. Hold on. Share the screen. Share you, son of a gun. Can you see the PowerPoint now? Yep. All right, here we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Chapter 14 is almost a repeat of a lot of the things we did in the first five chapters, okay? Except uh -huh. they're taking us into a, a perpetual system environment, so there's a few little differences. Um, they're going to talk about adjustments needed under the uh, inventory system. And it's really just one new entry and a couple of different ways of doing the same entries we did earlier. Okay, so mm -hmm. merchandise inventory. Here is one of the, this is what we were doing before. We were debiting right. purchases and we were crediting accounts payable. And when we sold something, we were debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales. And it looks like we have our visitor from the North Upper Midwest with us. Hi, Natalie. Hello. There you go. Can, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I hear Millie. How's Millie doing? It's good. Okay, hi, Millie. Hi. We'll, we'll get you. We'll, we'll get to you in a moment here, Millie. <laughs> Did you do your homework, Millie? Okay. We were just starting, Natalie. Uh, chapter 14 is a bit of a repeat of what we were doing before. We're going to come up with that big, long 10-column worksheet in this chapter, and we're going to use it to do our adjusting journal entries, which we should know already pretty well from the, the first five weeks. And then we're going to go into a new adjusting entry and a new type of financial statement. So take a look here. Andy's Auto Parts had a beginning inventory of $25,000. At the end, there was $27,000 in his inventory. Well, this is not that hard to figure out. Purchases were higher than sales, right? He bought more than he sold. He might have sold $25,000, but he bought $27,000. So they're just trying to get us to think along these lines here. Merchandise inventory is what we're debiting in this chapter, okay? We're not debiting purchases, which is a cost. We're debiting merchandise inventory, which is just what it sounds like. It's the asset, the inventory. Under this method here, we are going to credit the sales price to the sales account. And we're also going to prepare a two-step adjustment. So let's take a quick peek here. Adjustment for merchandise inventory. We're gonna go into our worksheet and on the trial balance, we are going to see merchandise inventory. You did not see that account on your prior chapters because we were working with the um, periodic method where everything was a purchase. So on your trial balance, you're gonna see a beginning inventory of 23,000. Under this adjusting entry, which will be a four line entry, we have to remove that with a credit and we're going to debit a new account 
called income summary. And income summary is just a holding account. It's a holding account. The balance of it will always be zero at the end of the month. So the first thing we need to do with our journal entry is minus this, not minus, let's use the right word, we'll credit the inventory and debit income summary. So that takes out the old inventory. Out with the old, now in with the new, huh? You've heard that expression, out with the old, in with the new. In with the new. Now we have zeroed out this inventory. There's nothing there. We, we come to the end and we've got $27,000 in our inventory. Now we are going to debit the inventory and credit cost um, credit the income summary okay notice that the debit and credit adjustments made the income summary are extended into the adjusted trial balance and that's because we're going to need them later when we come to our longer income statement so let's just go through this and when you see it visually in a moment it'll start to click in i hope a little bit huh Perpetual inventory. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to skip the periodic here. Okay. Well, we, we've been through this already. Uh, what is this here? Don't worry about adjustments for sales returns. <laughs> you see this, Roby? You see this, Natalie? Adjustments for sales returns and allowances. Don't even look at that in your book. The entire faculty looked at looked at that and said, "What the heck? We, we're not worried about that." Okay. Now we're doing estimated returns. We're not doing that either. Okay. So, and I'll get a, a little notice out to all you guys, what you, what you can avoid. huh? Okay. At the end of the month, end of the month returns inventory. Nope, 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 nope. Isn't that nice? We can skip all that stuff, huh? Okay. Here is our spreadsheet here. And let me zoom, zoom away. Okay, uh, Roby, Natalie, here's what I'm trying to tell you in the first uh, five minutes here. Here, we now see an account called merchandise inventory. We agree, right? There's your balance, 23,000. What did I say your new double, not double, but four line journal entry is? Or two journal entries, let's do it the right way, journal entry. We have to go out with the old. How do we get rid of this debit? We get rid of it with a credit. We get rid of it with a credit. So that's our first entry. We're going to credit this inventory and debit this income summary account. Okay. So do you see that, Natalie? You credit the inventory. It was 23000 Now it's zero because we put this credit here. And that inventory cost is now sitting in this account called income summary. That's out with the old. In with the new. The new, they're telling us that the inventory is now 27,000. So now we go in with the new, in with the new, in we debit merchandise 27,000 and we credit income summary $27,000. How about that, huh? No questions, Roby, you okay so far? Yeah, looks good. You, you get what we're going to, what we're trying to do there, Natalie? Take out the old inventory and drop in the new. Make a little yeah. bit of sense? Yeah. Question? Okay. Yeah, no. All right, let's keep going. And now here is the journal entry down here. Out with the old, in with the new. We're not going to worry about the estimate of returns or refunds payable. We're not going to worry about that, okay? We're not going to worry about that. Now, take a look at your rather longer income statement. And we, we went over this uh, before um, in, chap in chapter 13 when we did some LIFO, FIFO. So let's take a look here. We have sales, net sales, or not net sales. Yeah. Yeah, that would be gross sales. Oh, I don't like that. They don't show us the net sales, which I don't like. These are your gross sales, less the sales returns and allowances. Those are your net sales. I wish they put that on a third line. So here are your sales. Now we have to compute the cost of goods sold. We have to compute it. And how do we do it? We start with the beginning inventory. The beginning inventory 
forget that returns crap, begin, beginning inventory plus purchases plus net purchases, beginning inventory plus net purchases, which are purchases, less purchases, returns and allowances and purchase discounts. Any freight has to be added in there. So we take the 80 plus the 78.5 plus the seven, and it's going to add up to the 79.2, ignoring that $2,000, okay? Cost of goods purchased. What was our beginning inventory? $25,000. How much did we purchase? 79.2. That's how much is available for sale. Available for sale. At the beginning, this company had 25,000 books. They then purchased another 79,200 books. That adds up to 104,200. That's the most they could have possibly sold, right? You can't sell more than, than you had. That's the most you could have sold. So at the end of the month, we have to see what is in the inventory. And they went out and they counted the books and they counted 30,000 books. We had available for sale $104,200 books at $1 a book. <laughs> okay. At the end of the month, they went out, counted some inventory. They counted 30,000 books, meaning that the cost of goods sold is $74,200 meaning they sold 74,200 books. Do you remember this, Natalie, from earlier? A little stuck on this one? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm okay with this stuff. Okay. The key thing to remember is our little template, beginning inventory plus purchases is goods available for sale. That's the most you can sell. You can't sell any more than that. So what you didn't sell that's in the inventory becomes your cost of goods sold. Adjustment for unearned revenue. Well, we've been over this already. This is this is nothing new, but let's look at it. Let's look at it. Unearned revenue. That's the uh, season ticket money that you pay in advance for uh, sports events or a con series of concerts, huh? It's insurance money that you collected. And I think we remember this. Uh, Brown County Playhouse sells season tickets. They sold a maximum of a thousand, but that's okay. They sold 10 for each play. Hey, looks like they sold out. How about that? Okay. So when they received this $50,000, of course they debit cash and they credited the unearned revenue. What kind of account is that, Natalie? Do you remember that? Um... It's unearned. It is a liability. Unearned revenue as a liability. This company, this playhouse does not owe you $50,000 in cash. They owe you performances of Shakespeare. Okay? Performances of Waiting for Godot. The producers. <laughs> a night at the opera. You get the idea. Now, when you get the money, you put it in that liability account. And now they put on some shows. Now they did three shows during the month. So now they can credit ticket revenue. This is a sales number. This is a ticket revenue number, okay? And they debit or reduce that liability account. And you remember this, Roby, right? Yep. Good, okay. And here they're just showing you the entry here, let me just move this over if I may. Here they're showing you the entry for the ticket revenue. We had we had 50 and now we perform 30,000 worth. Ending balance is 20 and here's the revenue, okay? Here all they're doing is showing you some of the new some of the new accounts that we're, we're introducing here. And some of them you don't need to know about. Anything that says estimated, don't worry about. We're not doing that. Uh, the customer refunds payable. We're not doing that, okay? 
prepare the worksheet, okay? This is our big boy. This is the 10 column guy. Now this was on the, your first test. There were a lot of questions that said, <coughs> what income statement is in what columns? And you guys mostly got those right. Income, income statement you're gonna remember is in the seventh and eighth column, okay? Let's look at our adjusting journal entries. Adjusting journal entries. A physical count showed that the merchandise inventory costing 45.6 is on hand at the end of December 31. How do we do that one, Roby? You know what the journal entry is? Uh, let's see. You. This is out with the. This is in, this is um. Out, out, this is out with the old here. This is out with the old. Okay. So you would uh, you credit merchandise inventory and debit the income sum. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So let's take a look at that. You are going to debit the merchandise inventory. You, can you read that, Natalie, up here? Yes. Debit the merchandise inventory, and you are going to credit the income summary, okay? That's out with, that's in with the new, huh? Out with the old, what was the old? 52. We credit that, and then we debit it to the income summary account. Count, okay. So that's your new journal entry. That's the, the main new journal entry we're talking about. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Estimated sales returns. Don't worry about it. Supplies remaining at the end of the year. Supplies remaining at the end of the year. How much was at the end of the year? Eight hundred. How much did they have already? Six thousand. Okay. So that means we must have used 5,200, right? So we're gonna get rid of 5,200 from the prepaid supplies, credit supplies, leaves us with an $800 balance. And we're going to debit the expense account called supplies expense. You good with that, Natalie? Yes. Okay, go back up. Unexpired insurance, unexpired. Same thing as the supplies. They're wording it the same way, unexpired. We still have at the end of the year, $400 worth of future, future insurance coverage, $400. How much was in the prepaid insurance? 2,800. We know we only have 400 left. So we reduce the prepaid insurance with a credit and we debit insurance expense, okay? Let's see what other goodies we have. We have depreciation expense for building and equipment. Well, this is the one we always say we pray is on the test, right? Because it's always the same accounts. It's going to be a debit to depreciation expense for the building. I'm so sorry, guys, sorry. A debit to depreciation expense for the building, but we never credit the original cost of the building. We credit the accumulated depreciation. Same thing with the $3,000 equipment. I think that one is where we're pretty good. J, wages earned, wages earned. This is the, you worked over the last weekend of the month, Natalie, and you earned $700. You're not gonna get paid probably until January 7th. But that $700 belongs in December, right? So we have to debit salaries expense. Here it is, we're calling it wages expense. That's okay, they're calling it debit wages expense. And we're gonna credit what should be called accrued wages payable. Okay, this is a review of your adjusting journal entries. And then the last one is an unearned revenue one, okay? Sunflower, we, we, we have a bicycle magazine. That must be exciting reading, huh? A cycling magazine, we got $1,000 in advance. That $1,000 is a debit to cash. I don't even see cash on here, do I? Debit to cash, where's the unearned revenue? There's your debit to unearned revenue. Let me look at that again. Oh, that's the revenue. I'm so sorry, that's the revenue. 
So yeah, where's our um, unearned revenue? Forgive me, here is 1,000, okay? And then we'll see the 1,000 uh, subscription revenue over here, okay? 2,000, looks like that's a misprint, huh? The unearned, oh, there it is, no, 1,000 there. And a debit, let me look at that. Ah, bah, 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 unearned revenue. Okay, okay, now I got <laughs> Forgive me, I had a little blind spot. We had 3,000 revenue already. Re We've had $3,000 in this liability account. And now they're telling us we had earned revenues of 1,000. So that's where we come up with the 2,000 debit and the credit to the revenue. I think you probably could have explained that a little better than I did because you know that pretty well. <laughs> okay, let me zoom in here. Zoom, we're zooming the modern way. Whoosh. Okay, let's take a look at this, huh? Here we go. Here are the first, the first six columns. The trial balance, which we know is unadjusted. We know it's incomplete and it may even have errors that need to be corrected. So they're just showing you now, we just went over these journal entries just now. Here they are posted to your worksheet. The only one that's new and a little bit trickier is the treatment of the merchandise inventory. You're gonna to have to show both the debit and the credit in the adjustment column on the same line. 52,000, out with the old, credit that, debit income summary in with the new 45,600 they told us credit the income summary the rest of them are the basic um, adjusting journal entries we've been working with you have any, any questions on those other journal entries you're okay uh, Roby I think yeah yeah any questions Natalie well, not yet not yet. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So take a look at this thing, huh? Cash was $26,000. Cash was $26,000. we are never going to adjust cash. You don't go out into the safe and count the cash like you count your supplies and then just adjust, okay? So you never get to adjust certain things. Merchandise inventory. Out with the old, in with the new. And how about that? Now we got the new, huh? In the adjusted trial balance. We have the new in the adjusted trial balance. We'll skip that estimated thing. Supplies, supplies. We knew there were 800 at the end. So we had a credit 5,200 prepaid insurance. And the offsets of course are the different expense accounts, the different expenses. Here we've got, or I just, I just wanna center it up a little bit. Prepaid insurance, $2,400 credit. I expect to see insurance expense for that same amount down here, huh? And here it is. So I think we're okay with the journal entries. Just, just practice with that new one. So we've recorded all of these journal entries on here. And of course we make sure that the totals balance and we bring everything over here. And we should be able to do that, 26,000, 13, 1,200. Here we, here we have a debit and a credit going, but we don't have to worry about that. So now we have a final adjusted blessed trial balance, okay? Now we have an adjusted and blessed trial balance. So let's see what we have here. You notice they're drawing that line starting on the um, income summary. They're showing you that that's the, uh, the income statement, but let's go to a better presentation here. Adjusting journal entries. They're just showing you the entries again, again. And I know it's repetitive. I know it's repetitive. But I'm going to just one more time, merchandise inventory, out with the old, in with the new, okay? Out with the old and in with the new. Prepare under the perpetual. Okay, now we take a deep breath. 
what we were, what we just went over there was a merchandise in, merchandising inventory that uses the uh, periodic method. We count at the end of the year. Now we're working with a perpetual system. A perpetual system means that we record transactions in a way that we know every second of every day how many items are in our inventory and how many we have sold at any point in time. And we do it as follows. So under the perpetual system, the merchandise inventory, don't worry about estimated returns, cost of goods sold are updated throughout the year, meaning every moment, every moment. Let me zoom here, zoom, okay. This here, this here is a grid you really need to look at, okay? You, you need to look at this because a lot of multiple choices questions on the test are gonna come off here. Here we go. All semester long, we've been in the periodic system. So we are telling you debit purchases and credit accounts payable. Purchases is a cost. We don't even have the inventory account. We put everything into the account called purchases and then we count the inventory at month end to adjust, okay? Under the perpetual system, it's the same entry, except now we're putting it into the inventory. So that's your first key difference. Under the perpetual, we're debiting the inventory because we're keeping track of it every day. Under the periodic, we're not tracking it every day. So we have to put it in cost. You're re under the, the per periodic system, a sale is a debit to accounts receivable credit sales. That's no different, but this is the key distinction between the perpetual system and the periodic. Unlike the periodic system, when we record a sale, we also record the cost of goods sold on that sale. So here we sold a garment for $400. We had purchased it and put it in our inventory at $300 per garment. That was what we paid for it. That's what the cost of goods sold is, what you paid for the garment you sold. So now we have to recognize the cost and the fact that we don't have that inventory anymore, right? We have to debit cost of goods sold, credit merchandise inventory. And the difference between the two is a profit on this transaction. Let's take a look at another thing here. Under the period, periodic, remember purchase returns and allowances and stuff like that? We don't have purchase returns and allowances under the perpetual. Another little tiny difference. You still have to reduce the accounts payable. When somebody returns something to you, they don't owe you that for that merchandise anymore. So we all know we have to debit accounts payable. But we're gonna credit the inventory because there was no purchase in the first place, not on, our, not on our purchase cost account. So a subtle difference there. And guess what? If somebody returns something, we have to put it back into the inventory with the debit and reverse the cost of goods sold. Don't worry about Sales, okay, sales returns, here we go, sales returns. Pretty much the same thing, customer returns, fee, 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 fee. Uh, let's see here, customer refunds payable. I am skipping the customer refunds payable. Don't worry about that. And I know Cornelia agrees, okay. Now armed with the what we just discussed, let's look at our year end adjustments here. Year end adjustments. It's really just one on this screen, as far as I'm concerned. The inventory under the perpetual, you got the out with the old, in with the new. We need to know that when we're doing that worksheet. But here, look how easy it is here on the perpetual side. Since our perpetual tells us that we had $800,000 in our inventory, say, and we went out and counted maybe once a year, we don't, count every, we don't count every month under a perpetual, we may never count. We go out and we count it one day and we don't have 800,000, we have 795. 
that would be your journal entry. 5,000 cost of goods sold over short credit merchandise inventory. Hold on here. Adjustment for sales returns and allowances, we're not doing. Shrinkage, we should talk about. Shrinkage, we should talk about. Inventory shrinkage. All of a sudden, you don't have 100 shirts. You've only got 19. Somebody stole one, perhaps, or you sold one, but you entered in the wrong part number. So when our inventory is on a perpetual system, it doesn't mean everything is perfect. So if we find out that uh, we have to reduce the inventory, here's our adjusting entry. It's that easy. Debit cost of goods sold dash inventory shorter over credit merchandise inventory. So once a year, this company goes out and they count. They just count once a year, say. And they counted 3710, 3840. There was that shortfall of 130. It can also go the other way. It can go the other way if they counted more, then you would debit the inventory and credit inventory short or over. Okay. We are done uh, with this chapter. We are done with this chapter. I am going to call your attention to, if I may, I am going to call your attention to this page right here, guys, okay? That's one you really want to be looking at. Understand these differences between the methods. The shrinkage. And I know I'm going fast. I'm just looking again. Pay attention to this page too. The um, the famous six columns to get you going. Okay, hold on here one more second. Bear with me, guys. Okay. Hey, any questions, Roby? No, no. Uh, no. Pretty not, too, not too tough. The, your repairman hasn't shown up yet, huh? No, not yet. Okay. How about you, Natalie? No, I think I just have to study a little more on the uh, flip-flopping merchandise inventory and income summary. Yeah, you're not going to learn it just by listening to me babble here for for an hour. Yeah, you got to you know take what I tell you and uh, you know apply it. Okay. Um, not too hard. You should, you certainly know that expression, right? Out with the old and in with the new. Yes. Okay. One more important thing is Millie around. Come on. Hi. Is my face real big on the screen right now? Hi, no. Hi Millie. How you doing? Hi. Hey, I can't see you. I'm sitting on my lap. Come right here. Hi, Millie. Don't, don't, don't. All right, you ready for our little dance, Millie, real quick? Ready? Here we go, ready? One, two, three. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Pretty good, huh, Millie? Millie is saying to herself, this guy's a teacher? Jesus, what's going on here? Well, okay. I'm, I'm good for the rest of the session. My repairman called and was... You can't make it till after two, so. Well, I would have been surprised if a repairman does show up in my experience. <laughs> now, we were just finishing up here. I was just goofing around with my pal, Millie. Hi, Millie. Isn't she cute? <laughs> Look at the smile. <laughs> okay, I guess we're finished then, huh, guys? No questions? Okay. Um, we can do Chapter 15 um, next week, I think, okay? Okay. Um, you know where to find the tutoring and everything, all right? Yeah. Um, all right, Roby, you have a good uh, I got a week. Question, a question that's good, unrelated really to uh, this. Mm -hmm. you no, know, in, in your your bank account, your, your personal bank account, that that's an asset, right? 
If yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's your asset. Okay. You mean if you're in regard to a company? No, just your personal bank account. Your and that's you your asset. Your, yeah. You look at your check register. And why are the you know on an asset? The pluses are in the debit and the minuses are in the credit. The debit's right. on the left and the credits are on the right. <laughs> Why is it that in your checkbook, <laughs> checks are on the left and the credits are on the right? The, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the deposits are on the right. <laughs> I'll tell you why, because the, you're, looking at the, you're looking at it from the bank side. Um, no. you know, they, they don't work with, with debits and credits. The reason I'm chuckling, Roby, is I've been teaching this now quite a while here at two different schools. And whenever we get a little older student, uh, you know, older than you, I mean, the first and mostly women too, I'm going to have to cut this part of the speech out, I think, <laughs> but I get women coming in here who, who have been in the workforce. And the first thing they say is, no, no, no. When I go to the bank, they don't debit my account, they credit it. And that's what you're asking really, right? Yeah, well, when you make a deposit, it's- They credit your account. It's not in your-, in your Yeah, because account. they're crediting cash. <laughs> yeah. If you want to look at it like that. I see. So that's a the, question. From a bank standpoint, the, uh, the deposit is a liability to them. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not their money, yeah. Right. Yeah, that uh, I don't know anything about how banking accounting works, but yeah, they debit cash and they put that in Roby's uh, bank account. That's got to be some kind of yes. it's got to be, I guess, some kind of capital account. And hopefully they make money on your money and blah, blah, blah. So. All right, guys. All right. All right. I'm going to cut us off. All right. You take care, Natalie. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now, how do I close this thing? I always get stuck here. There we go.